spent a bunch of time on drone forums online and I found the top 10 ways that people crash their drone. So I'm gonna go through them and show you how you can avoid each of those. The number one way to crash your drone is not to do a pre-flight. Just like a real pilot, you need to do a pre-flight on your drone and your controller before every flight. Here's some key things to check during pre-flight. Make sure your props are on correctly and use prop guards to reduce the damage of crashing if you do bump into something. Put your landing gear down and don't take off from grass or sand. Make sure that your battery is clicked in place solid and won't come loose and that you have full battery power. That's not enough. Point the flat side of your antenna to your drone like this, not like this. Set your controller to P mode and turn on multiple flight modes. We'll talk about this more in a minute. Make sure that your max flight altitude is set correctly and if it can help, enable a max distance so that you don't fly too far away accidentally. Set your return to home altitude to just higher than trees or buildings around you. After you take off, hover in place and make sure everything looks and sounds good. The number two way to crash your drone is not to wait for a GPS lock. Make sure your drone can see plenty of GPSs because that's how it knows where it is on the planet. If it starts off with a weak signal, it could end up drifting somewhere or those signals might bounce around and it might not get a reliable signal and that can mean it could be moving when it thinks it's still. You also wanna make sure before you take off that the home point is locked because hopefully you won't have to use that home point but if it does return to home, that's where it's going to and sometimes the drone won't lock into a home point until it gets up in the air and is away from you. And so when it returns, it's gonna be returning to a weird place. The number three way to crash your drone is to look at the screen instead of looking at the drone. I know, I'm a video guy and I always wanna make sure I'm getting the perfect shot, so I spend a lot of time just looking at the screen. But you need to keep your eyes on the drone because when you're looking at the screen, you're only seeing forward, you have tunnel vision. So you might slide sideways into something or you might decide you need to back up to give yourself a little more clear framing around your subject and you'll just back into a tree or a building or a person or something. If you know you're gonna have to spend some time looking at the screen, have a second visual observer there who can keep their eyes on the drone and just give you a heads up if you're about to crash into something. The number four way to crash your drone is to fly it out of line of sight. I know it's also illegal, but it's also a great way to crash your drone. If you're flying out there, you might be chasing a shot or trying to get closer and closer to that distant lighthouse, and pretty soon you can't see it at all. Even if you can technically see it, if it's far away, you might not be able to see which way it's oriented. You might feel like you can pilot it because you're watching the camera on your phone screen, but what if your phone dies? That happens all the time. And then people have no idea how they're flying the drone because it's too far away for them to see and they don't even know how to get it back. That's dangerous, that will crash your drone. The number five way to crash your drone is to use any of the automated flight modes. That means automatically taking off because it can crash into something that's above it because guess what? There's no f upwards looking sensors. That means using return to home when you don't need to. You know why? Because the drone's gonna fly upwards automatically where it might hit tree branches and then it's gonna fly back to where it thinks home is but that's not always right. Those quick shots where it does a nice little orbit around you or just like that cool asteroid look those are great ways to crash your drone too because the drone will fly in directions where it doesn't have sensors. Like it'll fly sideways or backwards or upwards and those are great opportunities to hit things. Instead of using all those, just fly your damn drone. Just know how to fly it. You can do all that stuff manually and it's way safer to do it that way. The number six way to crash your drone is to use sport mode. If you switch these DJI drones into sport mode, they turn off all their obstacle detection. That obstacle detection isn't 100%. You shouldn't rely on it, but it is a pretty good backup. It also means the drones will fly much, much faster, so little twitches on the sticks can put it into a dangerous situation. The number seven way to crash your drone, run out of batteries. Your drone will want to land when it's down to about 30% left. So it's not like a car. Like with a car, you can get to E and still have 20 miles left or something. No, at 30%, you need to be coming down to the ground. And once it gets to about 15%, it's gonna force you to land. So what happens to a lot of people is they fly all the way out and they say, all right, my battery's at 50%. Now I need to start coming back. I still got plenty of juice guess what, you probably don't have enough juice because at 30% it's gonna start coming down. And that means it might be stranded in the water or someplace where you can't safely land. The number eight way to crash your drone is to fly downwind in high wind. If you have to fly on a windy day, and it's always windy around here, fly upwind first. That way, if you're running low on battery, the wind will actually be helping push your drone home. If you fly out 
upwind, you can maybe have 75% of your battery left and still not be able to get home because it's going to take way more power when it's coming upwind. You'll see the drone, it'll be flying at a steep angle like this and it might not be making any progress. It can be still where you are and be very windy someplace else. Like you might be below the tree level and everything will be nice and calm, but then you get to 50 or 100 feet and you might encounter 30, 40 mile an hour winds. The same thing it can happen if you're flying near cliffs or around buildings and cities, there'll be sudden gusts of wind. If you fly over water, especially the ocean, man, it can be so much windier over there. So you have to anticipate this and you have to notice it right away. If you see that your drone is being caught by the wind, uh, get it back. And if you're flying in potentially windy conditions, stop every now and then and make sure that you can still make it home. If you do run into a problem where you can't get your drone upwind, the first thing to do is to switch it into sport mode. That's why I told you earlier to be ready to switch to it because that'll let your drone go faster and you might be able to get it home better. Sport mode basically lets the drone fly at a steeper angle like that. The props might get in the shot, but you'll get home safely and that's what really matters. Also, don't hit the return to home. You know why? Because return to home will make the drone fly up higher and winds tend to be higher up higher. So you'll actually want to get your drone down lower, closer to the ground, potentially even below the tree level where some of the wind is gonna be blocked. And that means you'll be able to fight the wind a little bit better. The number nine way to crash your drone is to forget about interference. These drones use radio signals and a lot of them use Wi-Fi signals, just like your smartphones, just like your computers. And there's a limited number of frequencies for Wi-Fi. So if you are flying your drone and you know what, you got a smartwatch on, this thing is sending out Wi-Fi signals that are interfering with this. Even the smartphone that you have in your controller is probably sending out Wi-Fi signals that are interfering with your drone itself. So if at all possible, put your smartwatch into airplane mode. Put your smartphone into airplane mode too if you don't absolutely need it to fly your drone. And eliminate any other potential sources of interference. There are also passive sources of interference, like any sort of metal building, dumpster, uh, cars. You know, you try to fly these things around car lots and you're standing near the cars, that can be a real problem. Those cars are very reflective and they, they're bouncing signals all around. And if you lose that signal, you lose control of your drone. This happens to people all the time. It's not just metal. If you fly near concrete bridges, if you try to go underneath a cool concrete tunnel, you're gonna lose signal and you're not gonna be able to get the drone back. So. Be prepared for this. If you do lose signal, try to physically move yourself so that you have a clear line of sight of the drone. Just get closer to it and check the orientation of those antenna on your controller and make sure that they are sending the signals directly out towards the drone. Earth is a huge source of radio interference too. If you try to fly behind a hill or a mountain or something, you're gonna lose signal. And then guess what? Your drone doesn't come back to you. No, you'll actually have to move yourself around the hill so that you have line of sight again. And if you're flying from a boat or if you're flying near a boat, that radar from the boat itself can completely wreck your signal. So just be aware, it can be especially dangerous if the boat you are on has radar. And the number 10 way to crash your drone is to freak out when something goes wrong. I know you've flown a hundred times and it's been completely stable and GPS just keeps it in place, but there's gonna be some point when you lose control and you don't know what's going on and, and at this point people start to get nervous. They get anxious and they just start jerking the controls. They actually oversteer it a little bit and pretty soon it's spinning out of control and they will make the situation worse. If stuff starts going wrong, let go of the sticks. Hit the pause button on your controller if you have that and make sure that you're calm. Check the drone's orientation, spin the butt towards you because it's easiest to control that way, and then fly yourself actively to safety and land and let your nerves settle down a little bit. So many people just get upset and it ends up crashing their drone. The way you get over that is you spend a lot of time flying your drone and pretty soon you'll be so bored of it that you won't even get nervous anymore. Fly your drone in addy mode without any GPS or any obstacle detection and just practice flying around obstacles safely, getting yourself into potentially dangerous situations and getting yourself out. That way when an unexpected dangerous situation comes up, you don't freak out. Be sure you know how to hand launch and land too, because sometimes even if you were able to take off safely, you might get dogs or kids around you or something and you might not be able to land safely. Just grab it and twist it. Down in the comments, I'd love to hear your crash stories. Tell me 
how you crashed, what you did wrong, and what you wish you should have done. If you have other advice for people on how to avoid crashes, I'd love to hear it too, because nobody wants to lose their expensive drone or, God forbid, actually hurt somebody. Don't forget to subscribe to see tutorials for drones like this Mavic Air that we have coming up soon, and uh, lots of reviews for what I'm sure will be lots of drones coming out from DJI in the very near future. Bye, thanks.